And here it is. It's Friday night, Car Cohen Carne. I'm James Van Osdell. And I took the past few nights off. You know, I this podcast started in my car. I would do it weekly. I'd meet guests at restaurants. We'd go outside. We'd eat food in the car. We'd talk. We'd do an interview. Then, of course, COVID hit in March. And I started doing this podcast from home every night, which was a new thing. It was, a, it was an undertaking. But I never really took time off. So this week, I took three days off for my first time really since March from this podcast. I'm rested. I'm well. And as I return to the podcast, I bring with me an awesome, long running, beloved Chicago band. It is Model Stranger joining me on a Friday night. I'm joined by Stephen Francis, Kevin James, and Vincent Joseph. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Hello, hello. So I, I guess let's just start with I, I described you as a long running band. You've been at it for 10 years, same three guys. That, you know, that's significant long, longevity in the Chicago music scene. You all still like each other? You're hanging out together during a pandemic? Yeah, if we didn't have the pandemic, we probably would have broken up. But it was a much needed time <laughs> off to get a breather in there. No, we're actually, <clears throat> we're going on 11 years in December. And um, I was just doing a, a something, another interview today and kind of came up and I was like, we're still in love with each other. We're still intact. Uh, we still kind of have the same goals and drive. And um, it's, yeah, it's unheard of, like to play music with the same three people. Stephen and I have been playing together for for uh, what 20 years yeah, something 20, like that 24 years um and then vince fell into the equation and fit wonderfully and when it clicks it, it just you know it and you don't want to lose that because it is hard to find kind of a soulmate in music absolutely yeah it's a marriage but you know at this point it, we kind of just look at each other like family even if we toyed with the idea of breaking up as a band there's no way because you know the the brotherly love will make you strangle one another and then jump back in the, in the house and work it out. <laughs> I want to talk about the new album phases. Uh, we're, we're here really at the precipice of the new album's release, but more importantly, Steven, you're a horror movie fan. Yes. 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 Very big. Very big. It, it's funny. I was digging into model stranger right before we jumped on. And I noticed that in a recent interview, you said, no one ever asks me about horror movies. <laughs> Steven, Steven, yes. I'm, I'm your man. Let's talk oh, about it. Let's let's get I into. I would, it. No, I, would, I would have prepped. I would have prepped. Let's talk about it. What do you want to know? Uh, give me your top top two movies from the 21st century horror movies. Ah, oh, that's so hard. I can't do that. But I'll I'll just talk about some that like you know come to my mind will always scare me uh, for some reason or another. Uh, I I kept getting darker and weirder and getting into these really gross places with horror. But, you know, very recently I started going back in time, you know, watching like more classics like Black Christmas or, you know, like, I don't know, I really like that movie Raw. I don't know if you've seen that one, As Above, So Below. Like some of these newer ones are pretty hip. Um, As and, Above, So you, Below, it's on Netflix, I think. Yeah, that's on Netflix. But I do Shudder. I don't know if you do Shudder. I do, it's, I do sh Shudder's hit or miss. Like I hate. There's a lot it, of campy uh, shit on, on Yeah, Shudder. I hate picking a movie on Shudder, getting about 40 minutes in and thinking, I've led myself astray here. Like I, I, yeah, of I just gave away that forty minutes, and then you, once you're that that deep, it's like okay, let's let's keep going. Let's see how this piece of crap resolves itself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like a poker game. You're like so far in, you're like, yes. I have to see this pays off. You know, I got to see the real. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. I mean, it's I used to uh, uh, I used to spend uh, every night watching a horror movie every night of October with an ex of mine and. You know, Vince also loves a lot of horror. Uh, he's the one that turned me on to Shudder. But I, I mean, I could watch uh, scary movies all the time. You know, it's, it's I, I do. I, I, you know, you mentioned watching a movie every night in October. I saw a lot of people on social media saying that it's, I'm doing my 31 nights of horror movies. That's cute. I'm doing it literally like every other night. Like, <laughs> 365. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's adorable that you have this thing in October. But yeah, I'm looking for horror. And back when people used to go to movie theaters, you remember like back in February, when people used to go to movie theaters, uh, <laughs> January and February were when all the horror movies came out because those were like the low risk months for the big movie studios. They didn't interfere with any of the blockbusters. And that's when they pushed out their like off the wall, weird horror stuff. And that was always like a great time for me. So do you, do you like any really like well-known bad horror movies that everyone thinks is bad, but you just love them for some reason? No, I'm not. I'm not like a campy horror fan. I'm not, I'm not that guy who seeks out like shitty 80s slasher movies. That yeah. said, I like clever spins on that. I love Terrifier, which is like an 80s horror movie. It's kind of hilarious too. But yeah. It's kind of hilarious. Yeah, yeah. 
So are, are you more slasher or like psychological thrillers or? Oh, absolutely psychological. When the Stranger Calls, the original one? It's been ages, but yeah. That Love it. Hitcher? Yeah. The like, original one? It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Recent movies. I loved Midsummer. I don't know yeah. if you guys are on board with that. Yes, I enjoyed the, Midsummer. Did, did you, the first one that director put out, Her Hereditary, was it? Or? Yeah, I didn't. There are people who love it, and I get it. My problem with that movie is I didn't really like any of the characters. Mm. And for me, I have to at least like one of the characters in a movie. Like, I found them all kind of. Well, then I understand why you liked Midsummer. I mean, well, uh, what's her name? Florence Pugh, I thought was great. <laughs> yeah, she is. I, I, I loved her. And just that was one of those movies you watch. I, I do this thing when I watch horror movies, and you probably do too. When things are so over the top or grotesque or awful, I get a nervous laugh. Like I kind of like giggle to myself when I'm profoundly uncomfortable. I saw that movie in the theater and there's this scene. If you've seen Midsummer, uh, the cliff scene, yes, the mallet scene, it was so awful and over the top. I was laughing in the theater. I'm like, this isn't the right re response, but it was, it was my only response. Have you watched Dogs Don't Wear Pants? Now it sounds like you're making stuff up. <laughs> no, I swear this is this, this is a shutter. This is a shutter original. It's a full You would turn film. this off after 20 it, minutes. It is. <laughs> I, I implore you to watch Dogs Don't Wear Pants tonight. Uh for 20 minutes. No, watch the whole thing. It's it's really a fascinating, it's a great film. I, I it's one of my favorites from the last couple of years. I was really excited to see that there was a creep show animated special on Shutter. The first but half was good, but the second half sucked. Well, I like the the circus story. I'd read that story before. Um, it was a short story that uh, King, right? Joe Hill published. Joe Hill. Joe Hill. The circus yeah. is Joe. Oh, you like the circus side. The other side was Stephen King. The... Right. Okay. But I the animation, it's like watching those old Marvel superheroes cartoons from the 1960s where they take a comic book panel and kind of move them around and try to make them look like actual cartoons. Like <laughs> it was very crude animation. Yeah. I, I wanted something a little more robust. I wanted to like a, snap that character of the circus, um, the little girl on Twitter. It was, it was so, it was just, it was really annoying me when I was watching that second half. I like the first half that Kiefer Sutherland played, uh, I think, the Stephen King one. All right. All that aside, you are model stranger. Phases <laughs> uh, is about to come out. We've heard parts of it. We've heard songs from it. Uh, let's start with Pick Me. Pick Me, Pick Me, Pick Me. Uh, there's a lot to like on this song it's i think it's an especially fine moment for the rhythm section of the band i think drums and bass really shine through on this one um i i like the the timeliness of this song it's a song about the need to feel connected the need to feel wanted and here we are all disconnected all feeling kind of adrift emotionally physically uh had you always thought that song was one to lead with or did the timing of the universe push that one up front so steven wrote that quite a while ago but like it was years ago <laughs> kind of in the the birth of the the social media outbreak and whatnot you know like hey look at me type of thing but um that probably came together the quickest out of any of the songs on this album and the, the album is kind of all over the place it goes you know in through phases um but that is definitely the more rock, straight rock and roll, almost pop rock and roll, right? Get to the point. Um, and he really wrote that and then we just popped it together. Yeah, I mean. But it was like, the thing that was weird is we so we'd, we'd had like a lot of songs coming in to make this record, like like 55 songs demoed. We were going on to producers and we we're like, yeah, here's like 50 songs. And they're like, what, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> We, you know, we, we need to whittle this down. We whittled, we whittled down to like 13 songs and we recorded all of them and we had nine and we were, we threw, or we threw 13 out to like a bunch of peers, friends, family. So like, what do you guys dig? You know? And like a lot of people were like, pick me. That, that I love that song. That's a one. Um, so we knew we wanted it to be on the record near the top of the record. Um, and then when we play, we've had a show in January and we, we did a, some filming of the show at Lincoln hall and we had our, our video editor, uh, making new music video and the video looked cool and it, it it worked at the top of the record so it just it worked as a single um but it wasn't like apropos in any way of the you know the times it just works all the time i think people right now especially want to feel uh you know found and connected and all that stuff so the ironic thing about that video that he was talking about was it 
could not have gone any better with the subject matter of the song though, because right. it is entirely shot on cell phones, footage yes. from the crowd, yeah. from the balcony. So it's just people, sh we didn't shoot it. It was people from the, from the audience and or uh, on stage shooting it. And then our uh, editor just put it all together. So it's, it, it worked out pretty cool. And I do love the video and that approach, besides what seems to be a production nightmare for your video guy, that, that seems like a lot of work to put together, like a, just a jigsaw puzzle. It, it's it's all about community. I mean, it, so as we're talking about feeling disconnected, here's a video that showcases a community that's built around music, all contributing pieces to this this whole. I mean, it it, it couldn't have made a better statement for the song and, and for you, I think. Oh, that's great. And it, you know, sometimes you don't think of it like that way, but it's nice to hear the 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 outside looking in. Happy accident, I guess. Yeah. yeah I, why not? So breaks my heart. Hey, you guys clearly, well, while we're on the topic of video, you clearly love to create video. You like to have that expression yeah. as a band. We also have an awesome video editor. So he's, uh, he's fun to work with. And uh, that was the first video that we had no really part in uh, coming up with any of the plot or storyline or anything. I'm not uh, really sure what's going it. on there. It's like, it's kind of a horror movie. It's, it's, it's a little <laughs> dark. I mean, there is like an element. So we're at a, now that it's closed down, we could talk about over me, but we're in the basement of Crown Liquors in Chicago. That's what and it is. Okay. We shot everything in one room, flipped the rooms. Uh, but uh, the director wanted to, you know, showcase two people going into a relationship and, the, you know, being isolated from each other and, um, you know, flipping sides throughout the video. So if you watch the video, I start off dressing all white. I'm eventually end up in all black. She dresses in all black, ends up in white. She gets away. I'm stuck in the room. I thought it was like a little bit too emo or like breaking Benjamin for our taste. But, <laughs> but at the end, I was like, yeah, he did. He did well again. You know, he always seems to, to pull he, it out. He executed what, what the idea was. His, yeah, it was all his idea. And we were pretty open. I mean, he's a he's a he's a good dude to work with. Well, I mean, I, we've talked about the fact that you've been around for close to 11 years. I mean, all the way back 10 years ago. Uh, where do we go from here? This was like. <laughs> <laughs> this video it's like a stefan party it has everything a gorilla suit butt cheeks white v-neck t-shirts a trampoline red solo cups dan cortez the the pope is in the video and he ends up uh being accosted by the gorilla that you just spoke about <clears throat> that was probably one of the most fun days because that is all legitimately happen, happening unscripted. We What we did is we got a keg, we went into my backyard, we invited <laughs> friends over, and then as we were shooting it, neighbors and random people off the street started coming in and we just had a party. And there's a streaker at the end. I mean, it, it, that was, and most people don't remember the end of shooting that video, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> Round out a little bit there. It, that was a blast, yeah. And that, then you can look back and be like, oh, that was, you know, before I could have facial hair. <laughs> I mean, but that, that really set the tone. Fun band, creative, not willing to take the piss out or not unwilling to take the piss out of themselves. Yeah. Let's talk about phases. Uh, what's in store? First of all, I actually, before I, I'm going to ask you a question and tell you not to answer it. Today is Bandcamp Day. I, if anyone is watching this live on Facebook as we're doing this, or listening before, I think it's like 2 a.m. Saturday morning, um, Saturday the 7th. Everything you buy in Bandcamp goes directly to the artists. The, the, there's nothing taken off the top by Bandcamp. If you want to support an independent artist, today is a great day to do it. Uh, Bandcamp is the place to go. You can pre-order the new album Phases from Model Stranger on Bandcamp right now on Handsome Vinyl. Um, and also buy other digital music. For anyone you like, they're there on Bandcamp. I can't stress more strongly how great it is to be able to support bands right now on a day like today. Okay, that aside, phases. Let's talk about that. What's in store for phases now that we've heard a couple songs from it? What can we expect? Just kind of a ride. So I think those are good previews for it. Um, Breaks My Heart Leading as the single. Uh, mixes a lot of synth in. There's there's synth woven through different tracks in it. Um, there's a, one of my arguably favorite tracks, Time is Called On a Star. It's this really uh, epic driving through flying in outer space uh, synth bass crazy six minute long song 
Um, there's some straightforward rock pop songs. Uh, it's, I think those two songs we released as singles give a good idea to the direction that people are going to get out of it. Yeah, it's going to pull like the one he was talking about is, like, I guess, a little more Pink Floydy, but there's also <clears throat> some other songs on there. One of them, uh, we landed on Away Away, right? Yeah, but Away Away is the title. And that one is going to be a sub three minute in your face kind of pick me esque. Um, it showcases the guitar a little bit more than than pick me. Um, but it's it's pretty well rounded in the terms of like going with the 60s meets 90 kind of pop because I mean we grew up with music in that time frame. Mm -hmm. um, but as Kevin said, we there's a little bit of synth in there and it, it weaves it all together for a little bit more of a you know an alt pop type thing. But, yeah, I mean it's I, I, you got mean, anything I, else to say? I no, I mean I, th I think like you know for like the thing is I mean you mentioned like pick me like the showcase rhythm section. This record we spent a lot of time like figuring out how to get guitar out of the equation because so much of what we had done leading up to this record was like really guitar oriented. Um, so we want to challenge ourselves to really be a three piece. I mean we didn't stick to that always because we get we get really into being in the studio. We love being in the studio. But uh, there's a lot of like single line guitar stuff going on, a lot of backing vocals, but the real stars of the record, I think, are the rhythm section. Uh, it's a lot of just really great, you know, drum and bass stuff with guitars and synths kind of in and out to keep the landscape changing. But it's a record that I think showcases Kevin and Vincent very, very well and, and what they bring uh, to, to make us a strong three piece, right? Because I mean, you could only be a strong three piece if you have a great rhythm section. So that's what I see. I hear a lot of that in the record. Uh, more than our previous stuff that was a little bit more songwritery driven. But we also felt what we were talking about before we went live, um, we are vinyl lovers and we're record lovers. And it's very rare. I, now we're in the, the, the music industry is very single format oriented and, mm -hmm. um, you know, blast out the singles and then maybe put something together. But we more as a selfish move on our part wanted to put together a record because we wanted to put it on vinyl and be able to spin it yeah, so yeah. uh i i think we succeeded in that sense where we have a legitimate a side and b side and if you did you say m side and s side i did i said m side and s side <laughs> yeah <That's laughs> we, awesome um took me a second it, it yeah is a and b on it it is m and s. it is an m and s side there's no a and b but uh, it it kind of puts you through that that little journey if you are willing to pay attention to it. And we spent um, probably a better part of a month going through the arrangements of the track arrangement for the M and S side. To again, uh, when we started talking from our vinyl nerd perspective, it was like we want to put out a record. Hopefully, people buy the record and actually listen to the M and S side and get that experience. You kind of get it when you're on Spotify, but it just streams straight through, and you don't get that pause of the break and flip and start yeah. the next experience. Yeah. I, I think sequencing a record is a lost art because to your point, we are in very much an a la carte culture and songs are consumed piecemeal. So the, the art of taking this body of songs and really figuring out the best flow and how people will respond and what the statement is. I think that's awesome. And I, yeah. I think you just made the case for buying it on vinyl. I think another thing that's really was kind of shocking to us, like, it's so obvious that it's a physical plane, but you're limited on, on on time on each side. So we'd be sitting here with like like a pen and a piece of paper, like shit, we can't put that all on one side. And then there's one point where we had a, a layout of the record that would have only had like 14 minutes on the A side, and then the rest of the B side would be stacked. And I was like, I I don't want to listen to A side for like 13 minutes. But after we did this. Uh, all all of through quarantine and COVID, I've been listening to vinyl and I'm like, there's so many, so many records that are like two songs on the A side. And then you're like, oh, it's actually not that uncommon. But, in, you know, when, before you sequence a record on vinyl, you know, you overthink it a little bit in the beginning. Yeah. It's it's definitely an art. I mean, you've got to think like all those records, like all the great records, they had to think about that. We, we, we have to cut a minute off the song or we're going to run out of space on the actual physical plane. Hey, no one tells you when you start a band that you may have to do math someday. <laughs> and the sequencing debacle. So as Steve said, we tracked 13 songs for this. We originally were putting eight on this record. Um, kind of in the witching hour, it was like, oh, what about this? And we threw an extra song on it. It's called Robot Heart. 
That's what we threw on. No, we threw on where the wind blows. Where the wind blows yeah. But we threw it on at the end, making it nine. And then we had the new next four that we're going to use for something else. But it was just funny because that had we had the blinders on, it would have been an eight song record. That, that's what it would have been. But the sequencing, timing, flipping the vinyl conversation was so pre present that it just ended up Oh, let's put like, that one. You on. need another <laughs> song here because the, the back end of the record was like too much the same color. So we we moved some of the A side and put that there. But this is like probably boring for people that don't make records to hear us babble about this. I don't think it is because everyone's made a playlist. Everyone's well, figured out, how, you know, people of a certain age made mixed CDs or mixed tapes, but everyone's made a playlist on Spotify or wherever. Like they, they understand. This is a permanent expensive uh, from our end investment of a playlist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly but he, like kevin said also some of the that month that we were doing the sequencing some of these songs that are on the album weren't even on there we had other songs on so there's these these like six songs that were in limbo getting interwoven to what we have now but i i told i texted them probably like a couple of months ago and i was just like hey we we put a good record together i when you when you can good. listen to it and enjoy it then I think it's okay. Yeah, when you don't hear the imperfections and you just... I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, no, I love your band. I mean, big riffs, melodies, lots of rock and roll swagger. I, I think you sound awesome. Uh, again, if you're watching right now, Bandcamp, pre-order this album. It is Phases. Or if you have to post-order it, that's fine too. Uh, it'll be there waiting for you. Uh, Model Stranger, love what you guys do. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the Facebook Live now. Thank you everybody for watching there.